Pool party bog! That's bog the swimming lure. Yeah, it's best fishing lure. Welcome to Mighty Balls Fishing. Me and Bog are having a pool party. You go swimming? Are you the best fishing lure? So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, I'm always curious about kind of how baits work and, and why they work. So I've heard a lot of like pros in that oftentimes use pools and stuff to test lures. One thing I'm wondering about, we're going into, there's gonna be a lot of grass fishing through fall, through late summer and that. And chatterbaits are going to be a big player, like 100%. Frog fishing, chatterbaits, some punching, stuff like that. So I wanted to take some of the chatterbait trailers that are some of like the most renowned, like the most renowned styles, and test them underwater and see what they look like. And I got a little special treat for you too. I have a prototype chatterbait lure or chatterbait trailer that uh, we're going to test in the pool, and it's it's pretty cool. I think you're going to like it. But me and Bog are going to have a pool party. Make sure you like and subscribe. Say what's up to Bog. What up, Bog? You like swimming in the pool. You don't swim very well, but you enjoy swimming. And let's test out some chatterbait trailers with some underwater footage. Come along. The first lure we tested, this is a little easy. I don't want you guys to look at these as like specific brands or products, but really how I want you to look at these videos is kind of a test of a style of bait. Cause that's really my big conclusion, which I think you're gonna find kind of interesting. It really has to do with that. So pretty streamlined body. Um, this guy, I tested a one size bigger as well. Thanks Buck, you're getting us wet over here by shaking. But this was a test with the tail facing downwards. We did see some rise in the chatterbait. Um, this is a three, I wanna say, or I'm sorry, four inch swim bait or three, 3.75. Um, there was a pretty tight wobble to the tail. I guess in general, um, this is a smaller, more compact presentation, I think. It's, it's kind of your standardized swim bait trailer and it, it has a real tight wobble. I guess that's really the takeaway. There was rise in the bait. You could tell that the chowder bait was rising when you used the, the swim bait with the, the paddle tail. Let's see here if I can do this here. Facing downwards, um, which we kind of knew already, but it is a tight wobble. Um, you, you didn't see a whole bunch of kind of essing in the body. It's super tight, kind of like a trap or something like that. This frankly, and especially after, um, after the test, this is hands down my favorite chatterbait trailer. Cause the other thing too, we actually didn't test it in the pool, but if you go back and watch me and my buddy, Jacob Wall, he's an FLW pro circuit uh, tournament angler. Um, he figured out a little mod where he actually takes and he cuts this tail right there. And what you end up with is a super streamlined, almost like a, a fluke style, which we also tested a fluke style bait that has a nice little kind of like super tight chatter. And I can imagine it just by looking at how tight this thing wobbled with the paddle tail. So general find, if you got one choice of, of baits to put on the back of your chatterbait trailer, or on the back of your chatterbait, a little small swim bait, personally I think it's the best. But we're gonna go through some other ones too. This was the most surprising lure of the underwater test. And, and here's why I'm surprised. I actually have caught a lot of fish throwing a chatterbait with just like a kicker craw style. This is a gambler burner craw, a zoom speed craw, just any kind of kicker style bait. And I've caught a bunch of fish. And so what I found was, is when we put it underwater, it takes a lot of like pull. Like you have to be moving the bait pretty quick to get those kickers to go. Um, it, it does kick. So I guess like, for instance, if you're fishing it over grass and fishing it like pretty quick and ripping it, these kickers are going to move. The other thing that I'm wondering about too, is that chatterbait blade in front of the bait. It oftentimes displaces water and creates like a kind of like a current and a displacement behind it. Um, I'm almost wondering if it was inhibit or if it inhibits the water to hit these, like these tails in the correct manner so they don't kick like the way they're supposed to. But it, it takes more energy to make this kick versus the, the swim baits that we tested and the other baits that we tested across the board. Honestly, if you're looking to slow roll the chatter bait and you're looking for like a decent kicking action, I don't know if this is the bait to go with, to be perfectly honest. If you're moving it pretty quick, and ripping it off the grass and looking for some some extra water displacement but really the key is moving it pretty quick you know a kicker crawl style bait is a go-to but i was really surprised by the results i thought this thing moved a lot more with very little tension on the bait and that really wasn't the case i also tested a slightly larger swim bait and in this case 
I put the Joker upside down, so that means the tail's facing upwards. There was a distinct, and I'm talking distinct, difference between the tail down on the, the little easy that we did, the 3.75, and I think this thing is four and a quarter. Um, the tail pointing up, basically there was like no rise to the bait. And if anything, the bait, when, when fished at a fairly like even retrieve, went downwards a little bit and so that's something i found really interesting we always talk about how it how it really negates the rise when you when you fish this thing upside down but like i literally saw in the pool that this bait does not rise as much so that's interesting if you're looking to get your chowder bait a little bit deeper when it comes to trailers um this is a slightly larger swim bait as well this is the one that I almost always use when I'm in Florida or if I'm on bigger fish. I did notice too with the tail up and a slightly bigger plastic, I think it's a little thicker plastic as well compared to our, our little easy. We did get a little more hunting in the bait. It almost seemed like the, the chatterbait would kind of swing this tail and this tail would cause, like the extra heft of the plastic would cause the chatterbait to kind of hunt around a little bit. So something to keep in mind, you know, if you're looking for a super erratic action with a chatterbait, maybe look at a slightly bigger plastic. I would still go with like a swim bait style and, and definitely turn that thing upside down. That just reinforces the fact that that upside down swim baits are the way to go with this thing unless you're looking to rise it above the grass if you're looking to stay like if you got that much space and you're using like a quarter or a three eighths ounce chatterbait and you're trying to keep that bait above the grass definitely turn your swim bait right side up but we just saw underwater th there's no doubt that that tail just like that will keep your chatterbait hunting and keep it down a little bit more you can't screw with a classic and there's no doubt about that this is probably this was it's not so much anymore because I do that that easy mod and then I have a few other baits that I play with that seem to work about about just as good but actually after watching this thing underwater I might use it a little more again I mean this is a fluke this is a gambler super stud um, pretty simple this is actually the one that that we used underwater because I cut the tip off a little bit to make it it sink with the chatter bait a little bit more dude it's not a super amount of action, but it lit so a chatterbait chatters, right? So that's what that tail does. And you can just see how it does it. It does it up and down and side to side, and that's what it does on the chatterbait. It has just a little bit of kind of, you saw like a little bit of S motion, not too much, but the way this tail just shakes, it's super straightforward and super simple. Once again, though, maybe not the best selection of, of chatterbait trailer for you know, dead of summer, super hyperactive schooling fish or something like that, or trying to, I don't know, this thing puts a lot of um, hunting action on it too. When you when you actually stroke a chatterbait, like it, it'll dart it over like left and right because it is that straighter trailer, but it is a more subtle kind of vibration. So I guess what I'm getting down to is as those water temps get cooler, say late fall into winter, if you guys are able to do winter fishing, um, I know in Gunnersville it's one of the best times to, to get out on the water, but you're looking for something that's gonna displace water because oftentimes we get rain and the water gets a little stained, but you're looking for almost something to, to what do you call it, to kind of be a, a vibrating a plug, like a, like a rattle trap, you know, sort of mimic that sort of action. That's one I think, you know, it's really tough to beat a fluke style bait on the back of that chatter bait. It's super subtle. It doesn't displace a bunch of water. It's a straight tail kind of streamlined presentation. And the vibration you guys saw in the underwater stuff, the vibration is very tight and subtle. It, it's pretty cool and it reminds me why when I really first started fishing a chatterbait, this was my go-to trailer. And it reminds me why, because it, it really is a jack of all trades. So you want to see the secret stuff, huh? Pretty cool looking. <laughs> yeah, this is the new uh, prototype bait. I have no idea what it's going to be called. It's a uh, gambler prototype. It's it, it's designed as a chatterbait trailer, but it really can be used. You can probably flip mats with this, pitch this thing. Uh, I'm actually really excited. I've been getting into stroking a jig lately this year. Uh, I'll have to wait for next year's ledge season probably, but stroking a jig. There's a lot of different applications because it's kind of like a, a rib style bait fused with a jerk bait, which is kind of two things that are awesome. But how did it behave in the water? Well, it did what it was supposed to do. You can see it has this sort of this dangle tail and it and it sort of, how would you put it? It's, it's angled so that the water hits this sort of bump on the tail, causing it to, to kind of do like a little shakety shake, kind of like the tail of a you know, bait fish and that. 
Um, it had a nice tight wave. It actually has kind of like a slow undulation, which I liked because what's cool is this is a slightly bulkier bait. You can see they're still, they put a hook slot in it so the hook will pop out, but it's a slightly bulkier bait, but the action, I actually prefer slightly more subtle actions on chatterbait trailers because the chatterbait really imparts enough action where this tail is going to just chatter and vibrate and that's really all I'm looking for. I'm not looking to overpower or over present the chatterbait. So this thing was pretty cool. Um, it does cause like a little bit of hunting motion as well um, when, you, when you put some jerks on the, um, on the chatterbait, some kind of put a little English on it. I'm kind of excited about this. I don't know if this is the size of this prototype or this is actually going to be the production like size of it, but it's basically to kind of give you guys a first look. It's a ribbed style. It almost looks like a modified um, ugly otter. And then, like I said, there is a tail that has sort of a, a V out and then V into two tips, it's sort of like a fish tail. It, it just to go beyond chatterbaits, like I said, this is something you could punch mats with and, and do some interesting stuff with. But overall, super tight wobble. I kind of like it. Um, the ribs are going to provide more water displacement as well. But I tend to like these tight wobbles and the way this tail shakes. It's just kind of a soft undulating action. It has a little bit of whap every once in a while when you stroke it. So it, it, this one was pretty tight. So here's what I want to do though, because this is what I found most interesting about all these underwater tests that we did. And what my general assumption was is, you know, like you put anything on the back of a, a chatterbait and it works. But what I found is I really think streamlined straight style baits. Now they can have a boot tail on them. They can be like this, you know, like this prototype deal with, with the two prongs. But if you're going to put something on the back of a chatterbait, I don't think you really want flappers. Now you guys can tag me and tell me I'm wrong and all that stuff, which I actually invite because I like criticism. I like to have a discussion that's open and honest because if you bring every aspect of perspective into the mix, you know, people might actually learn something or we might actually, you know, make progress and go somewhere. But that's just my opinion, you yeah, know, whatever. But in my perspective or from my perspective and what I've seen underwater, this the straighter style baits, even if they do have a boot on them, perform a lot better, especially at slower speeds, than things with like kicker legs on it. Now what I didn't test is like a ribbon tail worm and things along those lines. Um, so I, I need to get back in the pool and do that at some point. But in general, I think if you're looking for a chatterbait trailer, look for something that's streamlined and straight, whether it's a swim bait or that. My personal favorite is this little easy right here. But something to keep in mind. I hope you guys enjoyed the underwater video. I want to do this more of kind of a test and, and look at stuff and show you stuff what it really looks like underwater. Might have been a little boring for some of you. Feel free to give a thumbs down. But I thought it was pretty cool and I'm taking advantage of the, of the pool at my parents' house to kind of uh, learn about some lures and sort of expand my knowledge because I definitely learned something during this process as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit a like and subscribe. Bog, Bog, thank you for participating in Pool Party with Bog and Balls. Happy Pool Party, Bog. Thank you guys for watching. We're out!